Welcome, Vault Dwellers. My name is Nacho Bidness, and you join me at my cabin camp today as we continue my series that I'm calling Is It Worth It? We're looking at the most expensive items in the game, either in regards to the caps required to purchase those items or the time required to grind those items out. Last video in the series was two-shot explosive legendary weapons. This video is going to cover the decontamination arch and the next video is going to cover legendary script. If there is a video that you would like me to make, if there is a topic that you would like me to cover, please leave me a comment below because I would love to hear from you. So without further ado, let's start talking about what it takes even to get this contamination arch. How much of an investment are we looking at? As you may already be aware, the only way to get the plans for the decontamination arch are to complete the Scorched Earth event. And that is getting to be exceedingly difficult these days. As time has gone on and more and more players have beaten that event for the first time, gotten their plans, or even beaten it multiple times, there are fewer players that show up to the Scorched Earth event with the intent of actually killing the Scorched Beast Queen. Many players show up simply to farm the ghouls and other enemies that appear during the event for high radiation fluids, hardened mass, and then farm the area for flux. So what that means is that nowadays with more and more people showing up to the event, the Scorch Beast Queen gets harder and harder to defeat, and yet there are fewer and fewer people that are actually trying to beat her. My best advice these days would be to try and do the event and nuke the, the Fisher Site Prime very early in the morning uh, or very late at night if you're living here in the continental United States. At least that way, there are likely to be fewer players out there to uh, mess things up for you. And once you do achieve the event and receive the plans, what we find is that the decontamination arch is expensive to run. You can see here that it costs 30 power. That is far more expensive than even the very large industrial water purifiers that only take 10 power. With a 30 power requirement, that takes three large generators. Three large generators is a very significant budget investment in your camp and ultimately you are probably better off using a fusion generator and having spare power to run other things in your camp. However, getting the plans for the fusion generator are a grind in and of themselves. You must complete at least three powering up events at the various power plants across Appalachia in order to unlock this. You can get the medium generator from a responders event and you can get the large generator for the first time that you complete powering up. You get a windmill the second time and finally on the third time you get a fusion generator. So even getting the plans necessary both for the decon arch and the fusion generator are a bit of a stretch. But then look at the requirements necessary to build the things once you have those plans. For the fusion generator, for example, things that stand out to me here are 25 aluminum, 20 copper, and 12 nuclear material. Holy smokes. 
Meanwhile, the decontamination arch itself, I have to actually read this off of the wiki page because it doesn't even show all of the necessary requirements on the screen. It requires six ultrasite, eight aluminum, 15 circuitry, nine fiber optics, five cobalt flux, seven fluorescent flux, two violet flux, three crimson flux, seven yellow cake flux, and your soul. All right, I kind of added that last part, but you know, holy cow, uh, all of that flux is a very significant investment of time and resources in order to stabilize the flux necessary in order to get these things. I mean, if nothing else, it means that you're gonna have to kill a bunch of ghouls and other glowing enemies in a nuke zone in order to get enough high radiation fluids in order to get the flux, stabilize the flux, and then build the decontamination shower. However, there is something that we can do that helps with this significantly. I think a lot of people ignore the contractor perk because for the most part things that are required to build are wood, steel, and concrete. But if you're going to build things like turrets, large generators, fusion generators, and especially the decontamination shower, the contractor perk is really a godsend because it cuts all requirements in half rounded down. For example, the fluorescent flux required is seven cut in half, that would be 3.5 rounded down. You can see on my screen that it now only requires three fluorescent flux. Meanwhile, the other fluxes have, for the most part, gone down to one or two, with the exception of yellow cake which requires three. The fusion generator is also much cheaper to build if we're going to use the contractor perk. So ignoring all of the grind necessary in order to get the plans for these two items, I think that it is not terribly unfair or uh, too resource intensive to build them if you are using the contractor perk. Now there's one final consideration to think about here. When we have this thing built, it is now susceptible to damage. Certainly one strategy would be to simply store it every time you're done using it and leave your camp. Another strategy would be what I have done here, which is to enclose the decontamination shower inside of a building, especially a building with metal or brick walls, because those walls are very durable compared to the wood walls and in-game enemies take a very long time to do enough damage to the walls to actually break through and then they have to do even more damage to actually damage your decontamination shower. However, if they do, it does require one of every kind of flux in order to repair it along with some additional materials. So you definitely do not want that thing damaged. Once it is built, be sure to protect it either by enclosing it or by storing it when it is not in use. So we've talked extensively about how hard it is in order to obtain and then build the decontamination shower, but we haven't really answered the question, is it worth it? But I think that with some careful thought, you can probably answer this for yourself. You, if you think about it, you come back to your camp on a fairly regular basis, at least most players do. And it is rare, especially 
at higher levels where you're actually able to obtain everything required to build the thing, it is rare to encounter enough radiation that you have to actually use right away before you end up heading back to camp anyways. Unless you're very obsessive about making sure that your that your bar on your health is constantly full, it means that you can get 25, even 50 percent of your bar radiated and still not have much of a problem. Head back to your camp, use your decon arch, sleep for a while, get your well-rested bonus, and you're ready to head back out again without ever having invested a stim pack or a rat away. Even further, rat away gives you a very significant debuff to your disease resistance, which means that the more that you use rat away, the more likely you are to catch a disease and end up being forced to use a disease cure or antibiotics. The upshot is that by avoiding using Rataway and using the decontamination arch instead, after you lay in a basic stockpile of Rataway, for example, to use in a nuke zone, which is one of the few places where you actually need Rataway at higher levels, it means that you can sell all of the excess that you get every time that you complete an event and get uh, six, eight rat away. Every time you open up a box a, of, compo or of first aid and get a rat away, you can sell that. Every time you kill a ghoul and find some rat away on them, you can sell that. And that ends up being a lot of caps. It is part of why my character is very frequently bumping up against the maximum cap limit of 25,000. So absolutely, even despite all of the effort required, my opinion is that a decontamination shower is worth it because it means that I never have to use Rataway unless I go in a nuke zone. It means that I use disease cures and antibiotics much less frequently and those combined mean that I end up having a lot of excess rat away and disease cure to sell. And those caps can then be invested in other things such as more plans. Those are my thoughts on the decontamination shower and whether or not the decon shower is worth it. I hope you found this discussion interesting and maybe useful. If you did, hit the like button and consider subscribing. If you didn't like, please tell me why in the comments so I can try and do better for you next time. Until next time, my name is Nacho Bidness, and I'm saying it's a great big wasteland out there. Let's go have fun in it. <laughs>